height. Uh, as as we get older, we probably don't have the same temptations as we had when we were younger. Uh, and 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 one of the questions, and I'm just going to leave it as a question to you because. Uh, I don't really know what older people than me, what temptations they have, but I think they're different than what they were when they were younger. I, I think I can safely say that. One of the things I did mention, I think we did mention in that Wednesday night service this past Wednesday, is a lot of times we think that as we get older, we're not able to do as much, and we're tempted to think that God can't use us. Would you would you think that would be one? You know, but I, I want I want to let each and every one of us know tonight. We're never out of the use of the Lord. I don't care what our age is. I don't care what our physical condition is. I think we can all, as long as we have voice, say to somebody, "Do you know Jesus?" I think we all can pray for God's Spirit to move. Uh, look through Ephesians. You know, Paul says, you know, pray for your pastor that he may be bold in, in what he says and, and not water down the message, in my opinion, what I get from it. And so we all have things we can do. And I don't want you ever to get in a point in your spiritual life that you don't think that God can't use you. Uh, we can't have victory in Jesus, <laughs> no matter what our age. And this evening, I want to I go along that theme tonight of, of temptation, and I want to talk about being tried and also being triumphant. Tried and triumphant. Uh, our scriptures this evening we're going to be in a couple places uh, but mainly James chapter 1 verse 12 and Matthew chapter 4 verse uh, 1 through 11 uh, Philippians tells us to be anxious for nothing but in everything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. We get anxious. We worry about tomorrow. We fret over things that are happening in our world. But why? Why? Is it because we're not doing this? Is it, is it because we're not being thankful for, for everything that God is doing in our lives? He says be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything, with prayer, or by prayer and supplications, let your requests be known to God. Do we take it enough to Him? Do we get on our face and hands or face or knees or whatever and cry out to the Lord as old. I remember days the church would just pray. Somebody would maybe lead the prayer, but boy, they would just pray. It would just, it was like one voice of prayer. Where's it going? And there's many places in, in the Bible, friends, where, where God endeavors to relieve Christians from that, that anxiety in their lives that comes as a result of things we are faced with in life. He's there to, to relieve us. He's there to take those things away. And, and maybe more than any of those things or areas of our life, is in temptation. He doesn't want any of us to give in to it. He doesn't want any of us to, to, to fall into sin again. 
Many people misunderstand temptation. Many people uh, 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 get defeated just by the temptation. Why am I being tempted? Why is this thinking? And why, 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 why? I can't get rid of this thinking. It's thinking, thinking, okay? And, and we get defeated in just the temptation itself, not in the following through and giving in to the temptation, but just by the temptation. And I want you to understand, we've got to get a hold of this tonight. For one thing, everybody is tempted in one way or another. Someone say amen. Everybody should be holding up their amen signs right now. And in fact, I don't know if I can do it here or not. I don't know if I can. I don't think I can. Probably can't, but PK can. PK can throw up an amen for me if he gets to it quick enough and he remembers how to do it. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody is tempted the thing we can't do is give in to that temptation we can't allow being tempted to defeat us we must understand that temptation itself is not a sin it's giving in to the temptation and trials and temptations really are an opportunity for us to have victory to triumph to, to win over the battle that we're going through. James 1 verse 12 says, listen, listen what it says here. Blessed is the man or woman who endures temptation. Endures. Is defeated the temptation that has come your way has gotten victory over the temptation that has come your way that that is that has plagued your mind i mean we understand that's where temptation comes from especially after being entirely sanctified most of it comes into our minds oh yeah the flesh lusts for things we understand that but hopefully if you're entirely sanctified most of it's from the outside now. And, and, and the Scripture says, blessed is the person who endures that temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. We, we talked a couple, two or three Sundays ago about how Jesus simplified the way. He says we're to love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and our neighbor as ourselves. And my friend, when we do that, it's easy not to give in to the temptation. Why? Because you don't want to disappoint God. Amen? We don't want to disappoint our Heavenly Father. And, and so James is telling us that blessed is he who endures temptation. And 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 I want us in our scripture. We we I probably have preached on this before, and 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 you probably will hear me preach on this scripture again. Why? Because it's an, an example of the of the man that had come into our world to save us of our sin. The God Man, the person who was fully God but yet fully human. And I don't want us to forget that he was fully human he wasn't just god in the flesh but he was he was a child of mary he bled like you he got hungry like you he got tired like you i didn't know if i was going to keep be able to keep awake and it wasn't because i didn't like the singing but i didn't know if i was going to be able to stay awake this evening because i was tired i'm tired he but jesus went through all of that and so what, what, what we want to understand tonight is that he himself was tempted. In Matthew chapter 4, it says this, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be what? To be tempted by who? The devil. Jesus was led. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted 
by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, it is, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then the devil took him up into the holy city, which is Jerusalem, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If thou be the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written that he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written again that you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again the devil t took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to Jesus, All these things I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. And in verse 10, Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. Help us, Lord, to expound on it this evening that you would open the hearts and the minds of all of us tonight that we might re receive what you would have for us in Christ's name we pray and amen amen Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin I thank God tonight that Sharon's here. That she didn't spend all day in the booth today. <laughs> That's a personal joke. <laughs> inside joke. I'm thankful tonight. It really is an inside joke. You have to ask us after the service. You had to be there. I thank God today that I don't have to go to anyone but Jesus Christ to prayer to intercede for me he is the high priest he's what he's, he's not only the high priest but he's the king <laughs> amen he's the king of kings and lord of lords he is the one that you and I go to to get to the father he's our priest and he was tempted this priest of ours was tempted in any way that you and I are tempted. If you are tempted in that way, chances are Jesus was tempted in that way. Yet, He didn't give in to it. It wasn't the temptation that was sin, but it's how we act to that temptation, whether or not it becomes sin. He was tempted in every way. And by taking a better look at His life, I mean, we understand he's the second Adam, right? The first Adam failed. The first Adam gave in to the temptation. But Jesus, being the second Adam, did not give in to the temptation. You see, God's plan from the very beginning was not for the things that we hear today, children dying, people having cancer and being full of pain your aches and your pains, my aches and my pains, it wasn't meant that way. It's only because of what happened in the garden that death has come about. This whole world is, is, is groaning. It's, it's, it's bursting at its seams. And, 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 and we got to understand that was not God's plan. The only reason that's taken place is because man, Adam, Eve, gave in to the temptation. And we can gain strength if we understand how the second Adam had victory over that temptation. 
So let's look, first of all tonight, at the source of temptation. At the source of temptation. You see, the temptations of Jesus addresses a major weakness of, of Christian living. The temptation of Jesus, it they came immediately after his baptism. Guys, switch that for me if you don't mind. I can't get it to switch here. It came immediately after his uh, a, a pinnacle part in his his ministry. Uh, let's let's look at that in in the scripture this evening once again. Uh, chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. It says this, Then Jesus came from Galilee, if we can get this thing going right tonight. It's not changing on my screen, guys. <laughs> Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Let me get to the scripture. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, for you are, but you are coming to me. Get that picture in your mind for a moment. Here we have Jesus, the Son of God, and John the Baptist, who, who was the one uh, calling out in the wilderness, right? Preparing the way for the Lord, uh, his, his cousin. And, and here he is baptizing people in the Jordan for the repentance of their sins. And here comes Jesus. And, and, and John is beside himself. I'm, I'm the one you should be baptizing, not me baptizing you. But Jesus says, no, you are, to, you are to baptize me. You're the one that needs to baptize me. And, and so John is a little confused here this evening. And, and he doesn't understand what's going on. And then he says there in, in, in verse, uh, uh, yeah, where is it at? Uh, 15. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill the righteousness, or all righteousness. It had to be done. Jesus set in an example for you and me of what must be done to the children of God. We, we must be baptized. We, it's, not a, it's not what saves us, but it's, it's what tells people in the world today of what God has done in your life. But it's still something that we should do. I've not had this thing. I want this thing open. I've not seen this thing opened yet. I don't know what is underneath this thing behind me here yet. I've not seen it open. And I can't understand how it looks unless we open it, right? And the only reason we would probably open is to baptize somebody. And so we need somebody, somebody somewhere to get baptized. Amen? But in order for them to be baptized, they've got to be saved first. They've got to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and, and, and be saved. And, and so you and I must understand that, that this is a, a scene that, that, that John is really befounded about. He, he doesn't understand what's going on. 
And then he allowed him. Then he allowed him. And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. I want you to picture that. I want you to picture that for a moment. Jesus, and, and my understanding from the Jordan, it really wasn't deep enough to be dunked, okay? But, but my understanding of it is, is it was like, you know, taking the water and, and, and doing this, okay? That's just my understanding. I may be wrong on it, but that's the way I understand it. But the bottom line is, once he was baptized, the heavens open up. <laughs> The heavens open up and this dove descends down and lands on him and hear a voice saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Oh, wow. You see, right there, don't, right there, my friend, is the Trinity of God. You have God the Father. You have God the Holy Spirit and you have God the Son all pictured in that scene. A pinnacle, pinnacle point in Jesus' life. He's, he's, he's on cloud nine, if you will. Yes, even the Son of God can get excited and be on cloud nine. Our most severe temptations, and I think I shared this with Barb last Sunday night after the service. Those of you that heard her testimony Wednesday night after the service, we got to talking about you know entire sanctification and what the church stood for, and and and, and all these things that relate to to what some of you have probably heard all your life, and 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 you know. I, uh, Angie's coming at me from this way, and I'm I, I leave to go talk to Angie, and then and then uh, somebody else come uh, this way, and I needed to uh, all I had to I was trying to get a manual for for Barb so she can have the the doctrine and the history of the church, and and so I'm I'm getting ready to go here, and somebody else, and then and we got to talking more and so forth and so on, and 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 just about everybody was left, but but Linda Linda and myself and 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 Alan and 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 Barb and. And, and and Barb, I was telling her about entire sanctification, how it's a second work of grace and you got to be saved and so forth and so on. And Well, can we pray about it now? Huh? <laughs> what? You, you want to be what? <laughs> she came and prayed for entire sanctification. After she got done praying, I told her, Barb, praise God, but beware. This is a pinnacle. This is a spiritual high in your life. Beware of the enemy. You see, most of the time, we are we can be most vulnerable on those mountaintop experiences because we think we can't be defeated. We're I mean, there's the old enemy can't touch me. I'm I, right. You hear what I'm saying? She told me just that. I think it was Wednesday night. The old enemy attacked. He attacked. You see, it's 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 most often those mountaintop experiences. It's like the pendulum on the clock. It goes. It can only go so far one way, right, to where it has to come back the other way. And either way, either if it's high on this side and high on this side, it still has to go down to the low point. And it's when we are attacked by the enemy that we've got to be careful on those situations. You see, I want you to notice, I want us to look at what, what we see here in, in verse 3. Uh, this, that Satan is working on doubt. He's trying to throw doubt in, 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 in the, to Jesus' path. He says there in verse 3, 3, 3. Now when the tempter came to him, he said what? What did he say? If, 
if you are the Son of God. <laughs> Command these stones that these stones become bread. If you are the Son of God. Small word. But can throw doubt into a person's mind. This verse 6 says this, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. I think I shared with you all that night about a friend of mine. Someone I've really looked up to who is from a holiness church that understands entire sanctification. And I worked with him and we'd, we'd have lunch together and we'd take our breaks together and we'd read Scripture together and talk about the Lord on and on and on. And This was early in my Christian experience with the Church of the Nazarene and, and uh, I'm, I'm learning and I'm studying. I was reading the book Perfect Love by J.A. Wood. I, I was really hungry for, for what God had for me. I wanted everything. I wanted everything God had for me. Everything. I didn't want I didn't want to be left out of anything that God had for me. And 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 I think it was no, it wasn't Guy Wright. I can't remember the evangelist. Anyhow, we were in revival and I was reading that book downstairs. And uh and and I think I've shared this with most of you here. You know, I was down in the in the in the basement at my desk reading that book and 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 I mean, boom! It hit me. I, I I understood what entire sanctification was. I understood, and I got up from that chair and I turned around to go upstairs and I fell to my knees, and lost my breath and fell to my knees and and I, and I believe wholeheartedly that I I I was sanctified right there because I mean, I I, I understood what it meant to. to be fully consecrated to the things of God to, to just surrender everything and I, did, I mean I wanted to go up and tell Chrissy what was going on and what I was reading and I mean it just, I could not get my breath but we were in revival and, and, and so like I told Barb you know you need to get up and testify to this it's just us here but you need to get and that she got up testified Wednesday night and and so Wednesday when we went to church that night for revival I, I went to the altar and I prayed through again and I and and God, you know, His Spirit witnessed to my spirit, and 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 I mean, I I, I think I shouted a time or two, and 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 the Lord just blessed me over and over and over again, and I was on this spiritual high. I was on cloud nine, spiritually speaking. And I go to work the next day, and at the first break, I can't wait to get in and talk to my friend. And I go in his, his, his shop area and we, I sit down and I say his name and I said, guess what happened last night? I got sanctified. He looks at me and he says, are you sure? Those are his words. Are you sure? It cut through me with doubt like you wouldn't believe. That's what the enemy wants to do to us. He wants us to doubt what God has done for us. God does a great work in our lives and we need to give Him glory. And we, we, can't, we can't be the ones to throw doubt into loved one's face. We've got to be encouragers. And, and, and so Jesus is here with Satan himself. And, and, and Satan is trying to set doubt into his mind that, yeah, okay, you're the Son of God, then if you are, throw yourself down. Turn these bread, stones into bread. Doubt is one way that Satan attempts to bring us down. And most temptation comes like, uh, you know, a, a wedge of doubt, just like, you know, if you ever split wood, you, you understand you take that wedge and you start pounding it down in that that piece of wood and before long it splits it well that's what doubt can do to us if we're not careful in fact brother johnson is the one that 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 i i, I went to the altar afterwards and I, I talked to him about this and i was sharing with him about the doubt that set into my heart 
And he says, you know what you need to do? And I said, no, Brother Johns, what do I need to do? He says, you need to pray that through. He says, you need to surrender that to the Lord. And I did. And I stand firm today that the Lord sanctified my heart that day. There's no doubt. And I believe today He keeps me. And He, 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 he does a work in us, friend, that, that we, we've got to, 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 to keep going at. But Satan tries to use doubt to separate us from the Son of God. Adam and Eve, surely, what would he say? Surely you won't die, right? I mean, come on. You, 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 you know, you, 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 God, didn't God say you can eat of every, every fruit in the garden? Surely if you eat this fruit, you're not going to die. What is, it, what is that doing? It's setting doubt in the minds of Adam and Eve that God's Word isn't what it says. Once Satan gets doubt, my friend, he has the upper hand. He has the upper hand. And, and notice then, after the doubt, notice the temptation to, to gratify our physical, or Jesus' physical appetites, okay? Verse 2 and 3, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. I mean, come on, folks. Jesus had fasted for 40 days. And when the fast was over, uh, he was hungry. He had an appetite. He was human. He got hungry. And Satan was there. And he says, okay. At your weakest point, he comes to Jesus and says, turn these stones into bread. We are highly susceptible to physical temptations because we think they are normal. Satan takes legitimate things and he tempts us to use them in illegitimate ways to lead us to sin. There would have been nothing wrong with Jesus eating bread. The problem was using His godly powers to satisfy His desire in a wrong way. Then notice the next set of temptations to to tempt him to seek praise of others. Then the devil took him into the holy city, Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are a son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. For it is written, He shall give angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now, I'd love this Sunday school lesson that taught about this lesson probably four years ago or so. Uh, all of these temptations is Satan trying to get Jesus to shortcut the cross. Trying to get him to shortcut, shortcut to cross. There's no shortcut. Jesus had to die. He had to go to the cross. But Satan was trying to get him a way out. And he starts tempting him with, with these things. And, and, and really, this was a logical point of temptation for Jesus since, since he came to win the world. I mean, this is a logical point of temptation for us because we want people to like us. And, and, and so, so we've got to be careful of seeking everyone else to like us. Because it can lead us to do things that aren't always ethical. And then notice the temptation to seek personal gain. 
Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to, the, said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus had came to gain the world but he paid for it with his life. The shortcut would have been supposedly to bow down and worship Satan. But Satan couldn't even give him what he was telling him that he was going to give him. Satan promised something to Jesus which he could not deliver. Deceitful, liar, master of it. And that's what he does. He'll take a little bit of the word and mix it with a lie to get us to fall into temptation. The shortcut. <laughs> Don't go to the cross. I'll just give it to you. So that's the source of temptation. And I know that was lengthy, right? That's the source of temptation. But I want us now to look at, real quick, the formula for the triumph. It's not enough to know that Satan will tempt us. We know that. You've, you've experienced it. I experience it. We know that Satan will attempt to tempt us. We've got to know how to face him. We've got to know what we have to do to defeat him. I don't know about you, but the first step toward victory is to know who we are and what our assignment is. Jesus did. I'm a child of the king. I got to claim it. I, I got to claim the day that Jesus saved me at an altar at Fairmont First Church of the Nazarene. I got to claim it and name it. And I even told Barb, write it down in your book, the date, the time, and everything. Write it down in your Bible, what God done for you this night, because the old enemy, you're going to have to throw it at him one of these days. I, I, I'm telling you, with all my heart, I gave my all to the Lord that day in my basement. And, and I backed it up with a personal testimony and a public surrender at church service that night. Have I always had victory? No, I've failed God. But I got back up, dusted myself off, asked for forgiveness, and I move on. I don't start all over. I pick up where I left off. And I thank God tonight because of His saving, sanctifying grace is, is for all. But victory, my friend, comes when you and I realize that our primary assignment in life is to glorify God and not ourselves. Self has to be dethroned. Self has to give in. Self cannot be in control. And you and I, our primary assignment is to glorify God. If we glorify God in everything that we do or accomplish, it helps keep self off the throne. Self can move back in. Somebody say amen. Self can move right back in if we're not careful. And we need to look for Jesus' formula or look at Jesus' formula. My first thing is that he recognized who his enemy was. He knew it was Satan. The tempter has come, he says. The scripture says the tempter came. And that is Satan. And then Jesus, what did he do? He used his knowledge of Old Testament scripture as his major weapon in defeating Satan. My friend, this is so important. Look at verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written. 
It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that come or proceeds from the mouth of God. And then in verse 7 he says, It is written again, you shall, not be, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And then again in verse 10 he says, For it is written again, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. And so for you and me tonight, it's important for you and me to be well grounded in the Scriptures as well. Now, I'm, I'm not a Bible scholar by any, imag I mean, by any shot of the imagination. I, I, I have to study, I have to cram, I have to get get ideas and, and things from other sources and what so forth and so on but my friend let me tell you what there's not a time in my life that God hasn't used something I don't I can't memorize I'm not very good at memorizing things okay I had trouble with that in high school and, and memorizing for tests and stuff I just, I'm just not built that way especially as I get older it seems that it's a lot harder but but I know one thing there's been times that God has brought something back to my mind. I may not be able to tell you where it's at, but I can tell you what He says, and I've been able to use it. And, and that comes from being in God's Word. Whether it's the studying for, for, for messages or whatever it might be, or personal devotions, we need to be in God's Word. It helps us defeat the enemy. It's our main weapon in defeating the enemy. David himself said in Psalms uh, 119.11, For your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, Lord. How did David help his, proceed, or his, 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 his situations that he found himself in? And of course, we know David's life. It wasn't always pleasing to God, but he was a man that was after God's own heart, and God himself said that. And he says, I've hidden your word in my heart. I think that's on the pledge of the Bible, is it not? That we, we, we need to hide God's Word in our heart that we might not... So, so we, He can bring those up in moments of temptation. You see, Jesus also stood firm as He battled Satan. He stood firm. While we should not subject ourselves to temptation, we should... Please do not go out here and 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 if you got a if you had a drinking problem before, don't go out here and walk into a bar and 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 try to witness. I'll leave it at that. So we should not subject ourselves to temptation. You know what your weakness is. Don't subject yourself to it. But when temptation does come, we need not run. We don't need to run. Why? Because you're a child of the King. You have God's Word in you. We need to use it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 I used it Wednesday night, I think, for sure. No temptation is overtaking you except what such is common uh, to man, but God is faithful, and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But when, with the temptation will also make a way to, of escape that you may be able to, to bear it. I told him Wednesday night, it's not something he decides to do in the middle of your trial or your temptation. No, at the beginning of it, and it was Joseph, not Jacob. <laughs> My wife corrected me on the way home. It was Joseph, not Jacob, that I was talking about Wednesday night. Right? Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife. What did he do? God gave him a way out before the temptation started. He left his coat behind and he got out of Dodge. He ran. Along with the temptation, God gives us a way out. And, and my friend, we've got to look for that way out sometime. But it is there. Jesus kept in view of His real assignment, which was to glorify the Father by redeeming humankind. And you and I, we must keep in mind 
that our major assignment is to glorify our Father by reflecting His love to everyone we encounter. We need to, glor we need to reflect it. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> huh? Reflect God's love in every situation. And so, my friends, we've got a Savior that knows what you're dealing with and what you deal with. After Jesus withstood the temptations, notice what happened in verse 11. The devil, what? Left him. <laughs> the devil left him then Jesus said to him away with you Satan for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve and then the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him Satan fled and angels attended him. I believe with all my heart tonight that if we follow Jesus' formula of overcoming temptation and in the midst of that temptation following His formula that you and I will have the same experience in our lives. We can have victory, church. We don't have to give in to the old enemy. God has provided for us everything we need for salvation. I think we need to be reminded of this. Uh, time and time again because when we don't hear things Satan could sneak in we, we've got to be made aware of this amen do you understand what I'm saying tonight why are you preaching this about temptation to the crowd that we're the choir preacher because even the choir gets tempted even the choir has things that are difficult. And you and I, I need to be reminded that I don't have to give in <laughs> to the lies of the enemy. We can have victory in Jesus. Father, stand with me. Father, we thank you tonight for your love, your mercy, your grace. We thank you for this passage of Scripture that You've provided for us that shows us how Jesus defeated the enemy and how He didn't give in. Oh, God, I think sometimes we, we think, well, He was the Son of God. He's going to have victory I'm not Jesus I can't get the victory all the time well I I beg to differ with that thought scripture tells us that we can be partakers of that divine nature scripture just we read just here this evening tells us that along with the temptation he gives us a way out temptation isn't the problem it's given into it that can become the problem and so father I pray tonight that we your people here tonight I, I don't I don't doubt any relationship here tonight with you Lord but I also know that Satan can tempt each and every one of us. Well, we might not think so, but maybe that's the temptation. <laughs> so,
to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. I don't want to see anyone give in to temptation. It can be defeating knowing that we broke God's heart. And, and some of us have. In the past, some of us have, have, have been there, done that. But we're thankful for Scripture that tells us this is how you want us to live, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father who's Christ Jesus' Son. And He's the propitiation for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. And He wants to cleanse us. He wants to purify us. He wants to, he wants to, 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 to for us to get back on track and, and ask for forgiveness and move forward. I know the old enemy wants to keep us where we were, wants to remind us of our failure, even our sin. But God doesn't remember it because we've asked for forgiveness. And sometimes that's all we can stand on. So I pray tonight that you would help us to understand tonight we can have that victory. Not to give in to the things, the physical needs, the, the uh, needs to, to please people, the need to, to do other things that can just lead us down the wrong path. Pray for those who may have doubt tonight. Father, that they would just surrender it to you. Things that we might be fighting that our spouses don't even know about. I pray tonight that it's surrendered to you. That, that they would just release it tonight. Father, we, we're talking about eternal life. We're talking about a relationship with you that can give us life everlasting. And there's not a person in this sanctuary tonight, or maybe those that are listening online, that want to spend one moment in hell. So I pray tonight that we take our relationship with you seriously and if anything anything at all I think about what Suzanne Wesley told her children if there's anything that keeps you from being all that God wants you to be then to you that is sin So I pray tonight, church, don't let anything in between you and God. An attitude, a situation, doubt, fear, anxiety. Surrender it tonight. Surrender it. Maybe you just want to come and pray. Maybe someone would just feels the need to just come and get alone with God this evening. Not to be bothered by anyone. Not for the pastor to come pray with you unless you want him to. But maybe, maybe just get alone with God for a little bit. Let him know you love him. Let him know that you want to continue to serve him.
people are here with us as we depart from here as as we go may we go quietly while the one is praying this evening Father just bring us back to the next appointed service in Christ's name we pray Amen